Most people look at their bank accounts with great attention and they assess how much money they've got to spend, how much they've got to invest, how much they've got to give away. But in fact, time's much more valuable than money because you can use your time to make money, but you can't use money to purchase more time. So in today's Build a Business, Not a Job podcast, those that we run in between the regular Michael Yardy podcasts, I'm going to chat with Mark Creedon about time management, about investing your time like it is money. And even if you're not in business or planning to get in business, even if you're not a professional, this particular show will be valuable for you because I found we've all got the same challenges of trying to squeeze more into our day. I know people say that time's like money, but I found when I invest money, I make more but I've not yet found a way to get my time back. That's why we're going to chat about this topic today. I know over the years, Mark first started off as my business coach and in the coaching he did with me and with our team at Metropole and with his other big successful clients, he helped them manage their day better. That's what we're going to be talking about today. But in due course, I found his lessons so valuable, I've teamed up with him to form Business Accelerator Mastermind, which we sometimes call Metropole Mastermind. We'll explain a bit about that in the show today too, but welcome to this week's episode of the Michael Yardney Podcast, because I'm going to teach you how to treat your time as if it was money. Welcome to the Michael Yardney Podcast, where each week you will learn a number of new ideas regarding success, property investment, and money in around 30 minutes. Our show is brought to you by Metropole, who specialize in helping you grow, protect, and pass on your wealth through strategic property advice. Now, here's your host, Michael Yardney, Australia's most trusted property commentator, who has once again been voted our leading expert in wealth creation. That's the fifth time he's won a similar award in the last seven years. One of the biggest excuses I've found business owners give for not being able to work on their business, not having a business but actually having a job is, I just don't have enough time to do this. I know a lot of business owners, professionals, entrepreneurs have got really, really full days and they say things like, well, look, see, I'm just so busy in the job of my business, my profession, running it, I don't have enough time to step back and build my business. So in today's Build a Business, Not a Job podcast with Mark Creed and creator of Metropole Business Mastermind, we're going to have a talk about, I guess we're going to call it time management, but it's really a lot more than that. Welcome, Mark. Hello, Michael. Now, how often do you hear that comment i just don't have enough time uh it's probably i would hear that every time i speak to uh, to a new client every time i speak to a business owner um in fact you know i speak to business owners even when i'm at the coffee shop buying a coffee in the morning um that's what i hear there's just not enough hours in the day is what i hear but if i work harder if i work more efficiently i'm actually going to get more done they say but that makes just as much sense as running full speed on an exercise treadmill and think if you run faster you're going to run off the treadmill Mark, the solution isn't to work harder, and we have worked through this personally and with our team, my team at Metropole, to actually get them off the treadmill and and actually work in a much more efficient way. So let's get real here, Mark. There's really no such thing as having more time, is there? No, there isn't, Michael. Time management is a little bit of BS, to be honest. So we all have all the time there is. While we can change where we invest our time, we can't make more of it. The most successful entrepreneurs have actually learned to invest their time for the highest and best return of their business. Now, Mark, I know once a year, for maybe the last 10 years, I've been running a particular session at Wealth Retreat on the Gold Coast each year, where I talk about my system of time management. And I know a lot of people have said it's been worth a $10,000 in five-day investment at Wealth Retreat just for that, because people say to me, Michael, how do you do it? You run a uh, national business with offices in three capital cities. You've got a successful property portfolio. You write a new book each year. You write a blog every day. Uh, you, you, you seem to manage it all, and yet you take Wednesdays off to spend with your grandkids. You take six weeks holiday, Christmas, and another one in the middle of the year, and they wonder, how do you do it? Well, I had to learn those tricks, and I know you teach those in the Metropole Business Mastermind. So where do we start, Mark? 
Well, Michael, I think that if we look, we get back to basics before we get on to time management, we know that um, one of the big mistakes that people make in business is they what they've really got is not a business, but they've got a job. And you and I have spoken before about really the three levels of business. We know that, or the three stages of the building a business. People start at level one, where they first kind of kick off. They've they've launched a business. At this point, they've got no control, no freedom. They work hard. They do everything. They often move beyond that. And it's okay to be at that point when you first start. They move beyond that, though. They move to level two, and that's where they really are a full time business owner. The business is actually working. They're not they're not turning a a dream or an idea into a business. Now they do actually have a business. But in reality, it's still a job because the business only works when they work. And what we want to do is we, we want to help people. And certainly what we do in, in Mastermind, Michael, is we get people up to that level three stage. And the level three stage is where they've really got total control and total freedom, where the business runs without them actually having to be there on a day-to-day basis, having to be you know in the trenches all the time. And part of that process to get them to level three is to understand how it is that they can manage their time. So when people first come into Mastermind, one of the very first things we do is we look at their time. We use a lot of the principles that that you use at at Wealth Retreat and we get them to understand that there are some really simple hacks that they can use immediately to get themselves more time and then to use that time more efficiently and effectively to move the business to that level three and beyond. Well, Mark, I know some of the common frustrations that my team come up with is this, as we say, not enough hours of the day, but they're they're answering emails. They're they're dealing with uh, not just the customers and the clients that are very important, but also other staff and suppliers on their phone. They're putting out fires all day. They're jumping from one issue to the other. And at the end of the day, even if they've got a to-do list, they're exhausted, Mark. They're frustrated. What can you do? Yeah. Well, Michael, there, there are three really simple things that you can do. And I've seen this time and time again. This is the, the sort of things that you and I have worked through. We've worked through with the directors of Metropole. And I've seen it time and time again, working really well with people once they come into our mastermind program. So number one is to plan your day. And, you know, there's, there's, there's no saying that if you win the morning, you win the day. So it's about setting up a morning routine. Now, and you know, Michael, from the work that you've done with Tom Corley, there's lots of research about if you're up before the sunrise and all of those sorts of things. Either way, whether you get up at five o'clock or whether you get up at nine o'clock, the point is to start that day with a clearly, with a really clear routine, and then more importantly, to really plan the day. So I've I've got a bit of a saying, Michael, that cash flow follows your calendar. So for me, when you're looking at your calendar and what you're doing, you should already have your daily, weekly, monthly tasks laid out in your calendar in advance. So the morning routine that I'm talking about planning today, they're the sort of things that happen in between those things that you normally do every day, every week, every month. So you might have meetings that you have on a regular basis. But what about the things that come up that talk about putting out fires or things that need to be? So in other words, like the exception tasks, they crop up outside the usual daily, weekly, monthly. Um, How do you item. plan for those, Mark? Well, I, the thing is that that um, you may not plan for them, but w- what you can do is plan to have time to be able to deal with them. So you may not know that they're coming, but if you've got a routine in your day, then you can actually deal with those things. And Michael, let's talk about a very specific example and somebody known to us both. So the challenge that he had was that he was trying to generate sales in his business and at the same time trying to manage the business. And so what would happen is things would come up in the business from a management perspective that would hijack his sales time. And the end result, his sales dropped off dramatically. So all we did there was taught him how to batch the time, which is a nice segue to number two secret, if you like, how to batch his time and to focus time every day or every week on when he was going to deal with the management issues and to actually put the management issues that came up across the day into a folder to be dealt with in that batched time. And it's made an So we're difference. talking about, number one, plan your day. Number two is batch your time. It brings up the concept that people think they can multitask. To be honest, I used to think I could do that as well. And I see others, they're actually watching webinars or podcasts and they're, they're looking at their emails and they're doing other things as well. 
that's not efficient. And I've learned over the years, and partly the lessons you've taught me, is that it makes so much more sense to batch your time, so much more efficiency to just do one task at a time, despite the presumption that you can multitask. So, Michael, batching your time is a really, um, it's a great habit to get into. It's an easy one, one to fall out of. Um, so it does actually have some discipline. But, you know, there's been some really interesting research coming out on uh, multitasking. And it suggests that multitasking doesn't necessarily mean, you know, trying to do two or three things at once. It can even be something as simple as trying to check your emails while you're on the phone, um, looking at your text messages while you're on the phone, while you're talking to someone. And some of the research is suggesting that it can actually make you up to 40% less efficient. And in fact, they've done some research about sitting in meetings, people sitting in meetings who have their mobile phone on the table, not even face up, even face down, can actually make that meeting 20% less efficient. Mark, so, since you taught me that, I actually don't have my phone in sight. So that actually has made a difference. Yes, because even in the background of your mind, you're thinking about things. So that makes a difference. It also makes you more present, more efficient. Because as uh, was it Brian Tracy or Jim Rowan said, when you're there, be there, be present. And it does make your work more efficient. You know, it's hard to be there when you're talking to someone and, um, you know, you, you're glancing at your emails or you're glancing at your text messages. We know that doesn't work. So now the scary thing, of course, is there's this now new screen time app on your iPhone. I don't know if Samsung has something similar. So once a week, the phone tells me how many hours I'm spending on it, <laughs> as well as what I'm doing. Uh, very interesting statistics. Uh, can be a little bit scary at times as well. Yeah. You know, one of the things, Michael, um, you, you know that, that I, I fly quite regularly. And a lesson that came to me by default, really, was that when I'm on the plane, uh, my plane, my phone is on airplane mode. I, I know there's Wi Fi on phones these days, on planes these days, but you certainly can't take phone calls. And it made me realize that if I'm on the, if I'm on the plane for two and a half hours, uh, nobody can get me. And that's okay. When I land, I get a bunch of messages. I return the calls in a batch. I'm much more efficient at getting them returned. The other thing is that often I find that by the time I get back to someone because I've been on the plane for a couple of hours, they've kind of partly solved the issue for themselves. They've had the opportunity to put a bit more thought in it. So it's less of a knee-jerk phone call to me as to what do I need to do. So by the time I talk to them, I'm not actually solving the problem. I'm more just helping them to clarify the thoughts they've already had. So, so what I've learned from you with batching time is set aside fixed time for the big interrupters. So batch your phone calls, batch your emails. And since I've come back from vacation a while ago this year, I've again done it because I got out of the habit. It's so easy. I got had my emails running my life at the end of last year. So now I only check emails three times a day in the morning, in the middle of the day and at the en end of the day. But I think it also has to do with expectations, Mark, because people are now in this instant society expecting instant responses. How do you cope with that? Well, there's two aspects. Of there's an internal and an external. So the first, the internal aspect is to set expectations for yourself. In other words, be disciplined and remind yourself. So, Michael, in my office on my wall, I actually have a sign on my wall that says phone calls and it's got three times a day and it's got emails it's got three times a day so uh, emails are 7 11 and 4 and phone calls are 9 12 and 4 30 so I actually have that on the wall as a constant reminder so that's setting my own expectations of myself the next thing is to set the expectations of other people and there's a couple of very simple things you can do you can change your signature on your email to let people know that you can set up an auto responder to let people know that you're only going to check your emails two three times a day and you can also change your voicemail on your on your telephone. So I was saying before about putting your, your, your phone on aeroplane mode, one of the things that I now do is when I'm not taking phone calls or when I'm in a meeting, rather than just switching my phone to silent, I actually switch it to aeroplane mode. And that way I'm not even thinking about the fact that it might be sitting there buzzing or it's vibrating in my pocket. Um, no calls can come through. I flick it back on off aeroplane mode when I'm in my phone batching time. And it's amazing how much quicker you can push through those phone calls and emails if you've got yourself a set time to do it. I've just learned something, Mark. 
aeroplane mode. I'm now going to start using it. It's one of the things I find when I mentor people in my mastermind group and you find in Metropole Business Mastermind as well, that, that people are feeling a little bit isolated and actually just speaking, hearing these things, getting ideas from other people are very useful. That's the purpose of this build a business, not a job series of podcasts, but it's also the theory behind Metropole Business Mastermind. Where did all that idea come from, Mark? Well, Michael, it came from me going through the process uh, as a young man of building a very successful business, um, working 80 hours a week, absolutely burning myself out, and coming to the realisation that there had to be a better way of doing it. Now, it took me some time and a lot of learning and, you know, a lot of research, a lot of study to find out what that better way was. But the purpose of Mastermind is to show people that you can actually build a business that doesn't rely on you without killing yourself um, and you know, without getting divorced, having your kids hate you, whatever it might be. But you can get to that point. And so the idea of Mastermind is to help people to achieve that, to learn from the mistakes that, that I made as a young man, as a young business owner, and to get to that point more easily and more quickly. But as you just tapped on then, the other really important aspect about Mastermind is it's the group. So being in business can really be quite lonely. And Michael, I don't, I'm sure you do. I mean, you know, I still get people that sort of say to me, oh, aren't you lucky? You've got your own business. You can work whenever you want and nobody to tell you what to do. And, uh, you know, you've got, you do, do whatever you like and pay yourself as much as you like. And we know even in a level three business, that's not 100% correct. So Having that group of people around you who are in a similar situation, maybe they're at a level one, maybe they've actually achieved level three, and in Mastermind, we've got all levels of of business people. So having that group of people around you is really valuable. Definitely. So if you're wanting to understand a bit more about what all this means, how you can be in Mark and my Mastermind with people who are actually other very successful people being part of your Mastermind, um, including a number of the directors of uh, other directors of Metropole. Go to metropolemastermind.com, find out all about it, have a one-on-one chat with Mark, because we actually don't accept everyone, do we? Now, we're not being nasty, we're not being rude, but if it's a community, we've got to be sure they're the right people, Mark. Yeah, we do, Michael, and you, we've got to make sure that we've got people who are who are committed to pushing their business on to a level three. Now, we're talking about time management, how to be more efficient. So I interrupted you, as I tend to do. Number one was plan your day. Number two was batch your time. What's number three? Number three is setting time frames and practice saying no. So when you when you talk about batching your time, it's great that that we do that and we've got times, you know, 9, 12 and 4 or whatever it might be when you're going to do your emails or your phone calls. But the other really important thing is to actually set time frames for those things. So the idea is that if you've got a task to do, set yourself a time frame for it. When the time frame's up, the task is finished. And Michael, this is a really important tool to use with meetings. And you know, we've had this discussion in Metropole just recently about we set time frames for meetings. When the time is up, so is the meeting. So it's about um, setting up some times. Um, And also, I think the other thing too, just on that point, is to actually physically time it. My, uh, my, I call them my kids, they're adults. Uh, My kids bought me um, a 10-minute egg timer. And the reason they bought it is they actually said, which was very nice, Dad, we want to make sure you take some time out of the day and spend 10 minutes on yourself. I use that now on a regular basis. I actually carry that egg timer with me. I go into meetings with that egg timer. And when we start the meeting, I flip the timer over and I say, when that sand is finished running through the hourglass, this meeting is finished. So actually use some tools. We've all got, we've all got timers available to us. In meetings, of course, we won't use the timer on the phone because we don't take our phone into meetings. But find a way to find a way to actually use the timer. And you can buy an egg timer at any kitchen shop um, and, and you can get them up to, you know, I think a 20 minute egg timer. So actually use that time frame and make sure that you that you stick to it. Um, just on meetings, Michael, if you really want a meeting to go quickly, try a stand up. Um, well, since you've introduced that to Metropole, we do that a lot, don't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah, the stand up meetings now. Um, look, there was a company in uh, in Scandinavia that actually uh, hold their meetings planking. Um, uh-huh. I'm not sure if that's for no. us, 
mate. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, some people are fitter than me and they could probably do that. <laughs> what we've done now, Mark, is just scratch the surface of time management. You've given us a good start, but I know there's a lot more to it. Working longer hours is never the answer. Making better choices with how you structure your time, how you use your time, how to gain the most of your time is going to help you build your business, but it's also going to give you more pleasure. You're not going to find as pressured. Now, I know in Mastermind, there are whole segments on this, videos and podcasts, audios, as well as uh, special sheets that we use internally to structure your A, B, C, and D activities. And I guess that goes back to right at the beginning when I said, how do I get so much done? And it is because I do structure my time. So some people will say, yeah, but I don't want to get up at five o'clock in the morning. And I know you do. I don't. I'm not an early morning person, but I actually do get a lot done in the first hour or two of the day, as you said. So I'm not a five o'clock, but I'm a six o'clock person. But I know I get that in that hour and a half before the interruptions a lot done. So in future podcasts in this Build a Business, Not a Job series of podcasts, we'll go into it in more detail. And if you want to find out more about how you can build your business up to a level three business, and if you're not sure what a level three business is, go back to the previous podcast in this series where Mark explains it in a bit more detail. Even though he did it in, in general at the beginning of this particular show, if you want to learn how to do that, go to metropolemastermind.com, find out all about it, have a one-on-one -on -one chat with Mark, and see if we can work together. Thank you so much, Mark, and I look forward to our next chat. Yeah, me too, Michael. Well, I hope you can see that these build a business, not a job podcast that I'm running once a month in between the regular Michael Yardley podcasts are just as valuable even if you don't currently own your own business, even if you're not planning to be in business right away, even if you're a professional uh, or, or not, because in fact we're all in business. We're in our own businesses, whether it's the property investment business, the business of being you to help you improve. So I hope you learned a bit about time management and I just want to say thank you to a couple of people who've left some five-star reviews. If you enjoyed today's show, if you got something out of it, why not tell somebody about it? Because our mission, our aim is to make as many people as possible financially fluent, to, to lift up our country by educating as many people as possible about property investment, about money, about success, about business. And if you like it and leave a review on your favorite app, um, and I read it out, just Email me once I've read it out at michael at metropole.com.au and I'll gift you one of my books. Now, Benny D left a great review on iTunes basically saying, I've listened to literally every property podcast out there and Michael's is by far my favourite. Whilst others focus on selling their products, Michael focuses on teaching and facts. Thank you, Michael, for your knowledge and inspiration. Well, thank you, Benny D, and I hope you got benefit from this show. And another one came from Stuart C, and it was quite long, so I'll shorten it, but he said, another happy customer and podcast listener. He said, I started reading Michael's published works while living overseas almost 10 years ago. And when I returned to Australia, I met with Metropole in Brisbane. I read a couple of Michael's books and listened to him being interviewed on different people in the media, and I engaged Metropole to be my property strategist. Anyway, he went on and explained how he's bought three properties before he met Metropole, but they were all the wrong ones. And uh, then he said, just over a year ago, I found Michael's podcast. They've been amazing, and I've devoured them. They've been consistent with the clear professional and results-based guidance in Michael's books and business. Thank you, Michael, for this amazing contribution to the investment community. You've been my trusted advisor, and thank you for sharing the knowledge. Well, Stuart, it's been a real pleasure, and as a client of Metropole, I'm going to enjoy the journey with you. So thank you once again for listening to the Michael Yardney podcast. If you haven't worked it out by now, we've got the regular Michael Yardney podcast on a Tuesday, and we've got a number of alternative shows coming to you every Thursday. So now we're with you twice a week because of the demand. I hope I can keep up my end and keep you educated, entertained, informed. So I look forward to being with you again real soon. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Michael Yardney podcast, which was brought to you by Metropole, who help their clients grow, protect and pass on their wealth through strategic property advice. 
If you got value from today's show, we'd really appreciate it if you would leave a review and we'll read it out on a future show and Michael will gift you one of his books as a way of saying thank you. Just go to michaelyardneypodcast.com forward slash review and let us know what you think. If you don't already subscribe, head over to iTunes or your favorite Android app. You'll find us there as Michael Yardney Podcast. If you'd like to gain instant access to the show notes, head across to michaelyardneypodcast.com. Watch out for our show next week. You'll learn some new ideas about property investment, success, and money in around 30 minutes.